Hello and welcome to lecture eight, part three of our review of ordinary least squares regression. I'm Chris Mack, the professor for this class, and this is data to decisions. We've saw, seen in the last uh, few lectures that ordinary least squares regression encompasses quite a few assumptions. If the assumptions are true, we have a lot of benefits to using ordinary least squares regression. In particular, estimate is blue. Best, linear, unbiased estimator. The blue estimator. Um, that means it's the best we can do. We get the best estimates possible uh, if the assumptions of ordinary least squares regression are true. So. Let's check the assumptions. If they check out, we can be very confident that we're doing the best job we can in fitting our model and getting our estimates of the parameters and their uncertainty estimates as well. But if any one of these assumptions is wrong, I violate this um, best linear unbiased estimate assumption that we're making. So we have six basic assumptions, five of which are going to be critical. One is turn out to be not so important. Uh, for most of our work. The first assumption is that the model is right. We've picked the right model. It's the model that actually describes what's going on. And it's only the randomness, the uncertainty in our data, which causes uh, imperfect fits of the model. This is equivalent to saying that our residual is a random variable that does not depend on any of the input parameters, the predictor variables or regressors in our model. That means we have all the right regressor variables and we've properly accounted for how those regressor variables impact Y. Now, perfect models are kind of rare, but in some circumstances we can be reasonably confident. Model, this is an assumption of OLS doesn't account for model error. Next assumption, number two, is that the expectation value of our residuals is zero. This is always going to be true when we fit our model if our model has an offset term or an intercept in it. Um, by default, we will adjust the intercept term such that the residuals are equal to zero. That's how that best fit intercept term is, is created. So as long as our model has uh, this intercept term in it, then uh, this assumption will always turn out to be true. Uh, since that'll be the case for most of our work, we'll end up ignoring assumption number two most of the time. Number three, all of the residuals are independent of each other. They're uncorrelated. Now this is going to be true for the same for the population. Well, we're assuming it's true for the population. As we've seen a little bit, and we'll see a little bit more as we work through regression examples, as soon as you have a sample and you fit that sample to a model, then the Roman E sub I residuals, residuals that come from our best fit model, are not in and of each other. That's just the nature of, of how the modeling, the fitting works in a regression. But what we're talking about here is the true residuals. We're assuming that the true residuals are all independent of each other. If they're correlated with each other, then we have a problem we're going to have to deal with. Number four, assume that every residual has the same PDF, the same probability density function. It's described by the same distribution of, of errors or uncertainties involved in the measurement of the Y values. We call this homo schedasticity. I love that word. Nice big fun word to say. Homo means the same and schedasticity means spread or distribution. So it's the same spread or distribution for every single data point. If this assumption is violated, we say we have heteroschedasticity. Number five, we're going to assume that all the residuals are normally distributed. This means they have the same variance but that the variance in, in its distribution is a specific kind of distribution, normal distribution. And finally, number six, we assume in our regression 
all of the input variables, XIs, predictor or regressor variables, are known exactly in our data set. In other words, all uncertainty in the measurement is uncertainty in the measured value of Y sub I. No uncertainty in the X sub I at all. Now, what if these OLS regression assumptions are not true? Well, we need to check and find out. Uh, look through that list of six. Which of those assumptions can you validate? How do we validate them? If an assumption is invalid, or we suspect that it is, how far off is it? Is it a small difference that doesn't matter too much, or is it a big difference that's going to really mess up our regression? And if one or more of these assumptions do not hold, what does that do to our statistical validity of the parameters that we get? How good is our model fit if one of these assumptions are violated? And if we find out they are, is there something we can do about it? Well, to give you some examples, I'm going to take uh, four figures from a fabulous paper written by Francis Anscombe in 1973 uh, called Graphs and Statistical Analysis. Now, Anscombe was promoting the importance of graphing your data. And we're going to say the same thing over and over again in this class as well. Graphing your data and graphing the residuals, even more important. Um, but what Anscombe did is he created four data sets. They're all fake, you know, uh, made up data sets. But he created all four data sets so that when you did an ordinary least squares regression of a straight line, you got the exact same straight line fit. So the same intercept and the same slope. You can see that here with these four graphs. Not only that, but he produced data sets such that they have everything about the statistics of the fits were the same. That is, they had the same standard deviation of the residual. They had the same standard errors of all the model coefficients. If you were to uh, make a prediction based on this model, so calculate a predicted y hat, it would have the same standard error or uncertainty. In other words, looked only at the statistics, you couldn't tell the difference between any one of these model fits. You'd say they're all equally good. When we look at them in these graphs, we can see some very significant problems. So up here, we get kind of the normal thing that we expect, a random spread of residuals about our best fit line. But in another case, we obviously have the wrong model. We have a second order behavior that we're trying to fit with a first order model. Here we have what's called an outlier. One data point looks significantly different than the behavior of the other. So different, in fact, that we suspect that something went wrong, something uh, outside of the standard distribution of errors is at work in this particular outlier. And finally, we have what's called a high leverage data point in our last example. You see that almost everything about this fit is determined by one data point. Now that makes you uh, a little bit worried that you know small errors in that even large or large errors in that one data point can cause huge differences in the fit that would result. So these are examples that are very intuitive to graphs when we look at these graphs. Now what are we going to do about them? So what happens? First of all, before we talk about what to do about them, let's ask what are the consequences of violating the OLS assumptions? Well, at best, if the violations are kind of small and they're not large problems, at best, our regression becomes inefficient. Remember that if we have some parameter, call it theta, maybe it's the slope or the intercept or a predicted y value or something, we have some parameter, we're going to also estimate, estimate the uncertainty in that parameter, the variance of our parameter estimate. Uh, well, if regression becomes inefficient compared to OLS. That means the true variance of our parameter estimate is larger than we think it is. So using OLS assumptions, we'll calculate what we believe the variance of this estimate is. But that calculated variance of, of the estimated parameter is no good if our assumptions, OLS assumptions, are not valid. But things could get even worse than that the regression could become biased. Remember, we like OLS because it's the 
best linear unbiased estimator. So the smallest variance and it's unbiased. But if the assumptions are violated, then the regression could become biased. In other words, our parameter might not converge to the true value if we keep collecting more and more and more data. That means our results can be misleading. And in general, what we're going to try to do, what we're going to try to think about at least, is how can we minimize the mean square error? The mean square error is the variance of the parameter estimate plus the square of the bias. And our goal will be to have techniques that, that minimize the mean square error. So we're going to check our assumptions. Checking these six regression assumptions is called regression diagnostics. The topics that we're going to address in the coming lectures in this class will be how to look for and test for the normality of the residuals. We're going to look for outliers. Uh, an outlier is a residual where we suspect it's not ha doesn't have the same PDF as all the other residuals, all the other data points. We're going to look for leverage and influence in our data points and try to understand when those leverage becomes a problem. Uh, we're going to look for heteroscedasticity or variation in the variance of our residuals. We'll look for error in the predictor variables themselves. We'll look for uh, evidence that we have the wrong model. And finally, we'll look for uh, the possibility of correlated residuals. If we identify any of the problems, our regression using these regression diagnostic techniques that we'll develop and talk about in the coming lectures. We need to fix those problems. This is called regression remediation. Changing our regression in order to address any problems we discovered in our diagnostics. The kind of topics we'll address in this class will be uh, removal or adjustment of outliers, transformation of data, uh, using weighted regression or total regression, some underutilized techniques that are important in keeping our regression valid when some of the assumptions are invalid. We'll talk about model building, how to fix a wrong model. And finally, uh, we'll look at autocorrelation analysis. So that's a lot of stuff we're going to look at in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but the result, if we have all of these tools in our uh, toolbox is we can do good regression under a wide range of circumstances, wide range of real-world circumstances, things that happen when real data goes bad. So what have we learned here in Lecture 8? Uh, you should be able to quickly and easily answer all of these questions. Name the six assumptions in the OLS. Define mean square error of a parameter estimate. And finally, describe the Anscom graphs, what they can teach us about regression. Thanks, and until next time.